Hi, welcome to Rhythm and Rap. I'm JJ Johnson. We're in Connecticut, near New York City, with the versatile writers, producers, leaders, and members of a very well-known recording group. Join me, and together we'll get to know Nana Rogers, yeah. Bernard Edwards, yeah. and Sheik. An Niall Rogers and Bernard Edwards, writers, producers, performers, and founders of Chic. For years, Niall and Bernard searched for stardom. In 1977, their first record, Dance, 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 quickly became the first of many monster hits for this talented duo. Soon afterwards, stars like Diana Ross, Sister Sledge, and Deborah Harry were knocking at the door for their services. The Chic organization is the result of years of hard work and planning by Niall and Bernard, who've managed to cope with their new lifestyle and success with down-to-earth ease. When you do um, a Diana Ross or a Deborah Harry or a Johnny Mathis, do you write and produce differently for each one, or do you apply the same um, uh, chic ingredients, st standard, for lack of a better term, ingredients to each one? Mm. Well, mm. I, see, everybody has a certain has certain guidelines that they work by. You know, I mean, in other words, we have a certain formula for doing what we do. However, we absolutely write and produce differently for each one of those artists. Uh, uh, something we spoke about earlier, that when we were younger, we didn't understand that these people had images and concepts before we even got there. So we have to understand these people's uh, artistry and try and develop that with our interpretation of where they're coming from. It sounds a little complex, but it's, that's really what we do. In other words, we have to understand what Debbie's about in order to write songs that represent Debbie's image. Same with Diana. Diana was, I mean, she was instrumental in teaching us that. Instrumental in letting us know that, wait a minute, you know, you, you're writing songs for me now, and they have to represent my lifestyle or what I want to be about. Mm -hmm. And then we started getting all this pressure from outside that our songs weren't legitimate, they were lightweight, you know, they were disco, and, you know, and your art is, you know, something that, that's a bit more sensitive than that. Yeah, I don't want, want a person to walk up on me and say, all you want to do is write a hit. Of course I do, but I mean, on an album of eight tunes, I, I, you know, I feel pretty strongly about at least seven of the tunes, <laughs> you know? So it's not like something I just do in my spare time. That's my work. I'm very serious about it. And we found that the press and a lot of the people around us weren't taking it serious. And a lot of the musicians who loved us, you know, and that's the thing that kind of balanced everything yeah. off. And we started to talk to them more and to see that they appreciated and understood that we were musicians. We were writing songs. We were trying to change the sound and we weren't just trying to make some quick money. I met my wife in a club, you know, we worked in the same club. She was singing in a talent show. So we both decided that it's best that the family be kept away from, you know, most of the craziness. Because there's some nice people, in, you know, in the music business, but there's a lot of bad things that I personally don't feel that I want my family exposed to and for a person like me I'm a very quiet person so I want to come home to what I call normal people you know I don't want to come home to a you know a child star and a wife who has 30 interviews for the weekend and can't cook dinner you know and and I see enough of it out there and I know what it does to people so I'm real happy with my family I, I think it's the best thing I have it's very normal it's very stable so when I come off the road I can come home and sit down and watch TV and you know I'm just dad and the husband and I'm not you know Bernard Edwards from Chic you know I like the uh, wife being home you know and taking care of the children especially when they're young and I like for the, uh, the children to know their mother and father and I think it's important for, for kids to have a mother and a father to grow up and and you know to more or less have a working father and those type of things, the more conservative things from the old days. Uh, when Bernard stopped working at the post office and started into the music field, there was a difference in our lives because we knew that uh, the post office was an assured check during the week. But uh, when he went into the music field, there were times when he didn't have work and there were times when uh, the paycheck was nice. But um, with the two children, he often... Uh, worried more than anything about the children and where their sh next pair of shoes would come from and all, but they always had. Uh, the post office was, a, again, a sure thing, whereas the music field was not. You and Bernard have been together for a long time, haven't you? Yeah, um, if my math is right, it's about 13 years. And, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you been making music together for, for that? Absolutely. Time? In other words, our relationship developed from music. Uh, I saw him walking down the street uh, in, from the, in the neighborhood with his bass, but 
we did we didn't hook up right then you know we lived one block away from each other mm -hmm. but when we eventually met it was through music and uh, our friendship was revolved around music how about the other friends mm -hmm. uh when you're other friends in life, are you still hanging around the same folks? Absolutely. It's funny, too, because I've met a lot of people now that I dig a lot. You know, a lot of new friends that are hip. But uh, the old friends, we seem to have a different kind of relationship. It's a lot of, I guess it's a lot of humor, a lot of joking around, a lot of, you know, just a lot of good times. That's, that's really what it is. We just do, we hang. That's what it is. <laughs> you know, we just, it's, it's hip. It's really, really good. I know the real thing that keeps Bernard and I really close together is that our friendships are so limited. Like, the people who are our friends now are exactly the same people who were our friends then. When it first started happening, what was the first thing you went out and bought? Uh, well, <laughs> let me see. Bernard bought a color TV. He had, like, no furniture, and he had a little Sony Trinitron sitting, <laughs> sitting in his house with nothing in there at all. <laughs>